Hello, Audio Holics. It is me, Logan. And here's Tyler. And today we're reviewing the original 1978 classic, Halloween, directed by John Carpenter. So we are going to be doing a Halloween movie every day uh, for 11 days, because there are 11 Halloween movies until the new Halloween Kills, which will be coming out October 15th. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll be doing one every day leading up to that, and then we'll be reviewing that movie, which is going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it a lot. I was a big fan of Halloween 2018, though it did have flaws. But today we aren't talking about that movie. Today we're talking about the original starring Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode. So uh, I guess let's just get right into the positives. And um, I'll start off by saying the soundtrack, right? Yes. Like, one of the best soundtracks in film history, hands down. So yes. many iconic moments and just eerie sections of music and it's so minimalistic too it's almost yeah, it's entirely so simple just but it works piano. so well and, and and you know minimalistic music can just set off such chilling atmosphere and it can yeah that's really i think the movie's biggest strong point I, I, I think we can just transition into that is the atmosphere um this might not be the scariest movie ever made even for the time i would say texas chainsaw massacre which came out a couple years before this movie i would say that is way more scary and more way intense. more intense way more disturbing halloween though it is just creepy yeah. and there's no other yeah. way of describing it honestly even to this day it is one of the creepiest movies out there you know I, I always tell people like i used to watch this documentary series which examined cases where women were stalked and like they would often like show stalking as like a representation of the case that they're talking about and that shit was basically a horror show to me like it yeah. was terrifying to watch it's so creepy and that's what halloween excels in like, just Michael staring at Lori as she's walking from school or, like, just stalking her home and then eventually to the babysitting house through the car. There's just so many creepy-ass moments in this movie. And Michael doesn't even need to be doing anything, really. Just his presence. You can feel his murderous intentions. Yeah. It's really creepy and disturbing at times. Uh, another big positive, and perhaps the film's greatest strength, is the cinematography. That That is a close second for me. Yeah, like the shot compositions and uh, just like how they, they choose to, to film certain scenes. Like in like the, the opening scene when it's filmed almost entirely like one take. Even though it is technically two takes, there's a, like a blink and you'll miss it cut. But it like, is filmed almost yeah, entirely Yeah, like even if take. it is two takes, the concept of that is really cool. It's almost like... It's almost like 20 years of foresight into, like, first-person shooter games with, like, Doom and Goldeneye. You know, it almost looks like a video game, but it's not. It's a movie that came out in 1978. Yeah, the first-person perspective. Like, Halloween didn't pioneer that. That was very common in, like, Giallo films in Italy. But, like, nonetheless, it's used really well here. And then, of course, there's, like... It's definitely, like, made it... This definitely made that style popular more yeah. popular here in the west i would say uh i think one of the most unique aspects of the film the film cinematography is that like was it was it kubrick that said like he intends to make every frame a painting i think that might have been kubrick but it could have been hitchcock too i don't remember but john carpenter does that in this movie almost every shot in this movie could be a painting it could be a poster and actually probably fucking is especially in like the last act of the movie when michael's killing people and chasing laurie and shit like almost every shot is a poster or a shirt or something like that a wallpaper because there's just so many amazing iconic moments like michael in the hallway behind laurie or him coming down the stairs or him like sitting up and looking at her or the head tilt when he's got like the kid pinned up on the wall like just so many iconic shots and moments from this movie even in the beginning even in the beginning uh like in the scene where he escapes there's like that scene with the 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 fucking mental patients crawling around in the darkness that again could be a wallpaper it probably is somewhere it's really well done i love yeah. that aspect and like on a similar topic to the cinematography, just the direction in general. Yeah. Um, you know, 
John Carpenter's really clever use of foreshadowing. Uh -huh. You know, you had um, what I believe to be an Elvis song, which would have been pretty timely because around that time Elvis had just died. And then right after that, Don't Fear the Reaper. And it's especially after watching the movie multiple times, as we, as we both have, you know, it starts to sort of be like, you know, you, it, it's sort of like clever foreshadowing. Like, you know, we know that, you know, uh, Michael Myers is going to, I, I don't think this is a spoiler. We know that Michael Myers is going to go on this murderous rampage. We know all this crazy shit is going to happen. So now that we know that, we can kind of appreciate the foreshadowing of, you know, just simple things like some of the stalking scenes and some of the scenes that seem to not really have anything, like some of the stalking scenes that don't seem to really um, do much of anything, but in reality are just really, a second time, just really insane you know and very creepy yeah so i don't know this is probably going to be one of the shorter ones because this is just a straight classic there's not much to yeah. say about it like all of our positives are things people have said a million times about this movie and like as for the mixed and negatives aspects i can't even think of anything i dislike about this movie i can't think of one thing the only argument is that maybe michael doesn't kill people in creative enough ways but even that I kind of enjoy because I like the idea that this is just a man. This is just some kid who snapped and became a force of pure evil through that. He's just some fucking person. He's not like a god of or a superhuman creature like Jason. Like, he's just a guy. And so a guy would kill people by choking and stabbing and, like, not by crushing their heads and shit like Jason does. So I will um, kind of argue that a little bit. So, there are flaws to this movie. Um, I, I love this movie. Don't get me wrong. I don't love it as much as he does. And there are two main reasons for that. One, this movie is kind of a slow burn. And you can argue that that's a positive. And Why I, is that a negative? Well, because, like, nothing really happens until, like, the last, I don't know, 30 minutes of the film. It's Maybe, just but it's kind like, of like it's the building build up atmosphere. Yeah, it's building up atmosphere. And, and you can argue, I understand why you can argue that's a positive. I just think my argument is that just means that you're watching a, what, hour and a half long movie, only about half an hour of which is really worth watching. Um, but that half hour, and, and even the stuff leading up to it, is very nice. I just think like, the last half hour, which, is, does it even matter if I spoil this movie? I, I won't, but, you know, just, like, the crazy kind of, like, what it all leads up to, I think, really makes the movie. Yeah, like, that's the thing with slow burns. It's, like, slow burns are amazing if they lead to a satisfying conclusion, and when they don't, they suck. And then the other thing I would say is the acting. Look, I get that now it's kind of almost like a stereotype for old horror horror movies to have really bad acting. But just because we're used to it doesn't excuse the fact that it exists. You know, racism has... Oh, okay, never mind. But... I mean, I wouldn't say any of the acting in this movie is, like, bad, really. I would definitely say so, especially from a lot of the teens. Like, uh, Jamie, Jamie is Lee great Kirk. in this movie. I, the I, kids I, are I great disagree. in this movie. I disagree. I, I, uh, like, her friend is great. The only one that kind of sucks is the one that says totally a lot. But even she, she's, like, barely I, in the I movie. think, like, a, most of the acting is really kind of wooden. It's almost like they're reading the script for the first time. Or, I don't know. I feel like you have to approach it from, like, this is how people talked back then. I think it's you're not approaching a, no, it from too no, much of a modern like, perspective. Okay, yeah, like, yeah, the Valley Girl stuff, yeah. Th no, that's just a sign of the times. But, like, it, it's almost like, um, oh, what was, like, the, like, um, uh, hey, jerk, speed kills. Like, that kind of shit. It's just like, yeah, that's hokey. And yeah, we're used to it because it's a movie that's so ingrained in our culture that we're used to how hokey it is. 
that doesn't excuse the fact that it's hokey as fuck. Okay, but how that, could you argue that Jamie is bad at acting? Like, she's fucking amazing in this movie. I, I mean, like, I don't all know. all the Scream Queen stuff. Okay, and, yeah, like, Scream Queen aspects. stuff. She's a good... She's a good kind of emotional actor, but when she has to talk at all, it feels very wooden. And again, I disagree. She's like, she comes off as this meek character, which is what she is. Like, she's a meek, shy person, and she comes off that way when she talks. I don't, I, I didn't get, I didn't really get that impression. Well, um, like, in the scene where she's like, oh, you like Ben Tramer, and she's just like... Like, you can tell on her face, she's just, like, really uncomfortable. Yeah, and, I, I'll, like, that's good I, I'd say Jamie Lee Curtis is the best in this movie, um, but I don't know. It, it just, like, and again, these are just my two complaints. I still love the movie. Don't attack me. Attack but, him. Attack him harshly. Sick him, boy! No. <laughs> Get the pitchforks! No, but there are flaws in this movie, and... We can't just ignore the fact that these flaws are there. Maybe you don't see the flaws. Maybe you're okay with the movie despite the flaws. But you have to acknowledge that those flaws are there. I just don't agree about the flaws. But that's fine. We can disagree. Yeah. So, if do you have anything else to I say? I have nothing else to say. Well, Bottom then, line, uh, the movie yeah. is fantastic. It's been a classic for the best part of 40, 50 years, whatever. <laughs> It's been a hot minute. And, like, this movie is so good, it was input into, like, the Archive of Congress or something Library like that. Library of Congress. Yeah. <laughs> they want to preserve it to send it to the aliens if ever we make contact. Yeah. This is our art. This is the best movie we have. And they, they just come to Earth, like, totally. It was so good. Totally. Come on, we could have we given it to, like, you know, a Kubrick movie or something like that. But <laughs> Imagine if, like, the like aliens watch Kubrick. this and they come down, they're all dressed like Michael Myers, and they're like, what's wrong? We thought you liked this. <laughs> and they're coming around <laughs> with the knives. <laughs> oh, no. No, even this worse. This is human behavior. Even worse, they're all Laurie Strode screaming. They come and they're like, ah! ah! <laughs> we thought we would take the form of something you would recognize. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, tell us what you thought about the movie. Have you seen it? Let us know in the comment section below. But without further ado, we bid you audio do. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.